We got us a newcomer. That people, I get them every day actually. And a lot of them don't speak up and say nothing. But we need to welcome all the newcomers to the shop. Welcome to the shop, fellas. Anyone in the comments that says someone's new, let's everybody welcome them. Everybody's welcome in the shop. But uh, he said, do we, do we realize we got over 33 hours of movies? Man, all I got to say to that is if you want a chance of winning a t-shirt on the B1 Bomber Game Show, you better get busy watching them. Because you don't know where them questions from could come from. They could come from today. They could come from tomorrow. And they could come from six months ago. <laughs> you just never know. Okay. Now it's time to get serious again. No more football talk. Okay. There it is. Okay. Once again, you people that don't like using chisels for other stuff besides chiseling wood, turn your heads. <laughs> don't watch this. It might be kind of hard to watch. right there. If that would not have been waxed, I would have had a hard time getting that epoxy off without tearing anything up. I could have did it. I probably would have had to take a heat gun and heat it up and still would have left a little mark, you know. I'm going to have to get my chair over here, people.
So I try and vacuum them up. Anytime I cut fiberglass, I'd like to vacuum that right up right away too. I don't even want my dog sniffing that stuff. You know that cutter, that vibrating cutter, I love that thing. It don't put the fiberglass in the air like them rotary grip wheels, you know, dremels. Because when that saw and it cut such big chunks and not a fine powder like a cutting wheel, they just drop to the floor. You don't get none on your hands, no itchiness. Like a Dremel. Anytime I used to work with a Dremel, I would uh, put a long sleeve shirt on. And uh, as soon as I was done with my major cut, and I'll go in there and change. You know, it works my arms real good and still itch. That's that glue, hot glue, right there. Now Harbor Freight's got them things cheap. And you people that live in places where there is no Harbor Freight, go to harborfreight.com. Jason in Australia ordered some stuff and he sent it to him and he got it. He was a happy camper. Oh no, I just did what I don't like to do. But uh, so, if you're in New Zealand and you ain't got no Harbor Freights, go to harborfreight.com. And uh, they'll ship it to you. This is beautiful. That came out better than I thought it was. I was going to have some seepage right here. That corner was wanting to stick up a little bit. But I mashed her into the clay real good right before I put my resin on, and that seemed to uh, take care of it because it's just perfect. Well, it sure is a bummer they wouldn't let me take my camera in there. I think all you guys should send Harbor Freight an email and complain. Everybody. Every one of my subscribers. Shoot, if they had 1,600 people complaining, they might listen. <laughs> you know, they won't listen to one guy. They won't listen to me. But I have almost 1,600 subscribers. If everybody sends them an email... They might just listen, you know? So Jason and Rod and Patty all you guys that wanted to go look at Harbor Freight, uh, send them an email. Tell them what I do for them. And you never know what they might do, you know? But it ain't like I need a bunch of stuff from them. We're on the downhill slide. I got all the tools I need. It ain't like I need a lot from them, you know? Paint brushes and Rubber gloves. That's the only thing I need from from there now.